Hey, it's Jernizer, and it's time for another Tuesday tip. We just spent about 45 minutes talking about marketing technology, what's working, what's not. This is such an important topic because right now budgets are really, really tight. Not everybody is hitting their targets. And so the attention is turning to, is it time to sunset a particular tool? Um, is it time to look for a cheaper version of the one? And so the, the question on the table is, is tips for getting the most out of your tech stack and making sure that you, in fact, are using it to their fullest potential. So Patty Newcomer, Patty, what is your tip when it comes to looking at the tech stack? A couple of things. One is always be looking at new stuff. Every email that I get, annoying as they are, I look at them to see what's interesting out there from a tech perspective. But then you've got to make sure you've got the people on your team to run them and make sure that they're that they're working well. We, we review ours almost in real time, at least every month as we go through the budget to make sure that um, that we're getting great use out of them. Interesting, I love it. I, but I have to say, I'm gonna push back on this a little bit because it feels the opposite of the joy of tidying up where if you put something new in the closet, you have to take something out. I feel like if you keep looking for new things and that next shiny one and you jump on it, you're going to end up with more than you might need. So I don't know, Patty, how do you make sure that when you see that new bright, shiny object, you're not just saying, oh, that looks cool. Yeah, you have to balance that. I think that's a that's a fair point. But I also feel like it's super important to be inspired externally. You know, what are other people using? What are best practices that you haven't yet seen? What's what are new things that you haven't tried that you could really get super value from that, that you're not yet? And so balancing that with what what are the things that are in your tech stack today that you're not getting use out of? And can you move those out? Got it. OK, perfect. OK, Gabby Seiderfeld from uh, SmartEye. Gabby, what is your tip? Yeah, my tip is, especially when you're under budget pressure, is to do like a deep audit on your tech stack. And two things that I think are really worthwhile looking at is, first of all, ask every single person on your team to just make a list of all the tools they're using. Because believe it or not, especially in larger teams, there can be overlap. There could be different tools people are using that do the same thing and can be consolidated. And then also, and this happened uh, with us a few years ago, uh, check what is hitting your OPEX budget, like check with the financial records because sometimes people buy these tools on corporate cards years ago and then years later you don't even know that they exist let alone that you're using them but you're still paying for them so deep audit yeah i so appreciate that one because we got hit with a couple of those that were showing up on our corporate card and went wait what uh so <laughs> anyway that's a great one thank you gabby jeff morgan elements jeff what's your tip well i'd say that when budgets are deep and your team is plentiful that point solutions for all the different things you want to do can be the very most powerful way to use tech in your marketing. But as your team gets smaller and your budget constricts, I think that migrating potentially to like all in one type tools, like a HubSpot where you consolidate your CRM, your marketing automation, your sales enablement tool, et cetera, all into one platform. You might lose a little bit of power, but you can negotiate a, a smaller price across the board and you one less people can operate the entire ecosystem. I think that's such an interesting point because uh, going back to what Patty said is, you know, there's that next new sexy thing, right? And so you could go for that, but it's not integrated with HubSpot or if, if that's the platform that you've consolidated. So I sense that a lot of folks are looking at the same thing. You're going to sacrifice, maybe you won't get as good a marketing automation or you won't get as good, a, but you'll sacrifice it for the economies of scale and the efficiencies of it. So thank you for that, Jeff. Marshall Poindexter, Marshall what is your tip? So my tip is because marketing technology is usually around demand generation and trying to generate demand um, and drive marketing qualified leads to the sales team. If your sales team is not engaging with that tool or you're seeing that they're not taking the output from that tool consistently, obviously focus on that, see if you can get them on board or determine, you know what, this is just not a good fit for the sales culture. And so it's time to get rid of that tool and get a better one. Yeah, I think that's such a good point. And, and these tools are serve and purpose of something, which is, you know, ultimately helping you demonstrate that you're driving revenue in the organization. And if, as you said, Marshall, if the sales isn't using it, there's not much hope for it. So unless you can get someone in that department to champion and use it and own it. And I, I also think that the other thing is make them pay for half. 
because <laughs> uh, then their CRO might do it. All right. Well, anyway, if you're a B2B CMO who can share care and dare with the best of them, do me a favor and check out, do yourself a favor and check out cmohuddles.com. I'm Drew Neiser. That's your Tuesday tip. Peace out.